So welcome to St. Louis and welcome to the 8th Thorium Energy Alliance Conference. Future of Energy is going to be Thorium. Although Thorium is among my favorite elements, a big part of what we're going to be talking about is policy and rare earths. You know that they are sister uh, materials that uh, live with each other in the mineralizations. If you have a great interest in nuclear, especially thorium-based nuclear power, or even materials use, you better have an idea about the, the where you're going to get it from and vice versa. If you uh, think rare earths are magical and make all of our modern living happen, then you better figure out what to do with this uh, radioactive uh, byproduct that comes from it that most people think is harmful and useless and we happen to know is a great gift. In my travels, technologists like to get nerdy and talk about widgets and wedges and technology, and they shy away from doing the things they have to do when it comes to policy and outreach. So, you know, put your big pants on and uh, try and uh, extend some knowledge beyond your close-knit group of uh, technologists and outreach uh, to the general public. Highlight what is inspiring you to keep doing the work you're doing and they'll figure out how to do it themselves. You know, that's almost the open source uh, mantra, right? Since the uh, last Thorium Energy Alliance conference about two and a third years ago, we've lost some, some great folks. Uh, Sherman Namark, and he spoke at the second Thorium Energy Alliance conference, and basically he was the father of the Nautilus submarine, you know, the real father, uh, you know, the, the guy who gets credit for it. Uh, Admiral Rickover, uh, he gets credit for doing the inspiring, but he's the guy that got the brass tacks put into their holes and he got it going. He was a, he was a really outstanding person and, and uh, the other fellow that we uh, lost just recently was a very nice guy. It's really a shame because he also was the guy who made something happen. He did what every person in this room could only hope and pray they get to do one day. He built and ran the molten salt uh, reactor experiment. Unbelievably inspiring that uh, just about 30 guys and $9.9 .9 million in four or five years, they were able to build the molten salt reactor experiment 60 years ago. So it sort of brings me to this book that I read not terribly long ago called The Idea Factory. Bell Labs invented holograms, transistor, undersea cable, fiber optics, solar cells, radio telescopes, the Unix operating language. The author says that uh, these inventors, you know, set a buffet of technology before us that we feast on today. And but one of his laments is that we're, we're not we have sort of we aren't really adding to that buffet. We're just keep eating it and we might improve it or optimize it. But a lot of the base research has gone away. We don't support that really anymore. Everything has to be pure R&D, reduced to practice. Uh, the national labs have been forbidden to advocate for just pure research. They always have to have an actual uh, customer and end user in mind and our private labs like IBM and Xerox Park and Bell Labs they're gone are we afraid uh, just as a society to try something something new and move on a little tiny example of technology that lay dormant for 55 years was Gorilla Glass so it was invented in 1963 but today it's in every one of your pockets. Gorilla Glass is the front cover of almost every phone. A technology that was invented and perfected by these forefathers and set upon this buffet of technology, but no one thought to pick it up and utilize it until just very recently. Maybe we have, a, maybe we have some 60s era technology that's laid dormant, you know, essentially for the last 30, 40 years. You have terrestrial energy, you have uh, uh, Terra Power, you have Elysium, you have a lot of other companies that are throwing their hat in the ring, trying to move the ball down the court. We have to pray they succeed because the world really, really needs this energy source. Nuclear not advancing in a while as it's sort of been out of the news, so when young people learn about it, they're inspired by it. I've almost never met a young person who learns about the extreme energy density in the vast 
carbon free energy source that nuclear is you know this is the power that powers iron man and the bat cave and they know this is the power that they were promised and they haven't been poisoned by conflating power with uh, with war we're here to try and pass that knowledge to the next generation if you haven't gone into a school ever or lately and spoken to young people I won't quite say you should be ashamed of yourself, but, you know, that's the implication. We are so lucky to have Heather from uh, Mothers from Nuclear. And we have Eric and Tay uh, from Generation Atomic, and they have wonderful stories to tell a little bit later on. One of the fellows that I'm really honored to work with, Paul McIntosh, he's got this... Uh, hope of uh, terrestrial energy one day throwing the switch on the first commercial molten salt reactor and so he's got this switch recovered from old industrial uh, application in Hamilton you know he fished this thing out he's like I want to be there when the switch is thrown and I'm like man I want to be there too but maybe we won't you know I mean we got to hurry up you know I started this when I was 38 and I'm 49 now that's not a good track record I mean they they, they could have built two MSREs in that time you know, maybe we could be the first generation that cleans up our own mess, you know, and leaves the world a better place. And the young folks, they're going to run it and they're going to live with it. So I, I really hope you can commit yourself to the future today. I hope you hear fascinating things about rare earth. I hope you hear unbelievable and inspiring things and, and motivating things about policy and how much work has been done in the policy sector. And I hope you learn huge amounts of fascinating, nerdy, technical things uh, over the next two days. But mostly, I hope that you walk away from here saying, I'm going to go give a talk at a grade school or to some Girl Scouts. I'm going to go into this high school and I'm going to bring a Geiger counter and I'm going to teach them about radiation. I'm going to teach them what the facts are and I'm going to inspire them about this most dense of energy sources and this most magical of rare earth elements. And I'm going to show them, you know, that the future is an optimistic place. This is what uh, Hershey Julian, another fellow we lost, and uh, I think it's one of the more inspiring phrases, you know. We all have to commit to planting the seeds of trees whose shade we will never sit under. So with that, I thank you for your time, and we'll move on with the program. Thank you very much.